by the end of this video, you guys are going to be like, what did I just watch? <laughs> But, just so you know, this is what you just watched. Um, we, I showed you how to do this onto some shorts without sewing the shorts shut. We make several mistakes. Dub Nation, what's going on? It's your boy, Alan Wade. You know what time it is. You see it in the background. You know what we're about to do. We're about to have some fun. Little unorthodox and different type of video. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if and only if you see anything that you like, see anything that's entertaining or informative, guys. All right, so we are going to embroider onto the pocket, yes, the pocket of um, one of our Circle Clothing pants that we got from Circle Clothing. By the way, um, use the Circle Clothing links down below if you want to get any Circle Clothing's merchandise for your brand, guys. Unbranded Circle Clothing merch. Anyway, guys, um... I'm going to show you an interesting device called the 8-in-1 that goes onto our Recoma EM1010 right there behind me. So let's jump into this video right after the intro. Boom. Wait a minute, just like that. Boom, 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 just like that. Eight, 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 productions, just like that. Like, comment, subscribe, just like that. Boom. Wait a minute, just like that. Hey, Dub, you ready? Wait a minute. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that intro. Let me show you guys the eight in one. So this is the eight in one device. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. It's it's not eight in one because it's not in one, it's weird, I don't know. But this is the device that connects to your Recoma EM1010. And the one, I got our eight in one device for the EM1010 and one for the MT1501. This is the one for the EM1010. And the, the thing that separates them both is this this right here. These attachments are the same for both machines, but this is different. Alright, so this attaches to the actual machine right here, and you attach each individual bracket like that. Alright, there's two little nipples, if you will, that stick up right here, and there's a slot right here that slides in between there, and this um, female goes on top of the male. Um, let me demonstrate to you real fast so you guys can see how this works. All right, this goes in there, locks into that, and you screw that down, and that stays and doesn't move. All right, you guys got that? Simple enough, right? All right, just uh, reaching over, looking over, making sure the uh, camera is capturing all this goodness. Should have gave you guys a zoomed in shot, but it's okay. All right, so you got all these different attachments. You got one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is for doing back of hats and stuff like that. But these are all different stuff, different um, pieces that it can attach to pockets and stuff like that. And what it does is it attaches to, you slide this into the pocket and this, the, this, the front of the pocket, the top of the pocket that you see will be right here. The inside will be right here. And it kind of like separates it so that it only embroiders onto the top part, if that makes sense, all right? And, but you guys will see in a second. So we're gonna find the right attachment to connect to our circle clothing um, pants. The first one we are going to use is this. So we're gonna see which attachment is the right size. I think it's this one. This is too small, this is bigger, a little bit bigger. This is um, too deep, maybe, let me see. Uh, that's okay, but we're going to use this one though. I think this is the right size for what we're trying to do here. Yep, that's the right size. Alright, so we're going to use this one right here. Alright, so in order to get this to work correctly, we have to use some of this um, stabilizer slash adhesive. This is tacky back adhesive, is this? Stay away, back. Let me see if it's the right one. Give me a second, guys. Found it. Here it is right here. Alright, this is our tacky back stabilizer, if you will. It has a tacky back. And what a lot of people do is they put masking tape on top of this to cover the edges because when you use this tacky stuff, it kind of makes this sticky and it gets it all gooky. But what I find is if you use a piece of Brillo pad to clean this off, then you're fine. So you don't need that. So I'm just going to measure out a piece right here and I'm just going to cut it about the size of this right here All right. it's kind of too big but it's okay 
Um, all right, and we're gonna cut this right here. All right, halfway. A little rough. What we doing here? Cut a little bit more. Cut it down a little bit more. All right. A little bit more. Kind of get it. Kind of want to be sort of exact. All right. Put these in the background here. All right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this to this. All right. So that when we put it in this. It sticks to the pocket, stabilizing it. All right, get it? So this is sticky right here. This part right here is sticky. All right. So boom, we got the sticky stick. So we attach it like so. All right. So all types of little neat little gadgets that they made, right, guys? Neat little inventions that they made to make this stuff simple for us. All right, so we got that on there like so. All right, it's keeping the, it's gonna help stabilize and keep the pants steady. And we could even put another piece of stabilizer if we want to, but we're just gonna go ahead and just gonna go ahead and put that in right there. Place it around where we want our embroidery to go. I want my to fall about right here, so I'm just adhering it to it, kind of, sorta, roughly. Now you gotta place this on real carefully because it's obviously not that um not that much of a thing. You can put clips on here if you want to. I'm not going to. All right. Then obviously you raise this up, connect that to that, like so. All right. Connect that to that, like so. Put that in there, and then we go attach it to the machine. Hey everybody, you are now tuned in to an A-Dub production. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, go ahead and hit that button too so you'll be notified whenever the hits come. Back to your show. One part that I need to show you guys is you do have to adjust your machine's arm because as it stands right here, depending on what brackets you're using, you got to slide this part in and out to fit it. So I got to bring this part over a little bit. And it's a screw on here. It's a... Um, Phillips screw on here along with an L wrench nut on the inside that I have to adjust. This is the front of the machine as you are looking and right over here there is a Phillips and right over here there is a screw that an L wrench type of socket connects to, right? So you're just going to loosen this one up a little tad, just a little bit. Reach in here and loosen this one up a little bit, just a little bit, not too much. So when you got it loosened up, you can kind of fit it to the bracket that you want to put on it. So I'm just going to put this one in on this side, right? And then slide this over to about this size, the size of the bracket. And now I'm going to tighten it up because I know the bracket can fit once it's this size. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten, it, tighten up those screws. All right, same way I loosen it up, just tighten it up the other, tighten it up the other way. Now I'm going to take the bracket back off, get my pants, put it on there, and then come back and put it in. Alright, here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm being careful not to um, move it around because I know that sticky is not that sticky. It's not sticking it too much, but let me just get this up in here. Get this one up in here. Making sure the pants is going through there. And get this side up in here. Alright, a little tricky guys, a little tricky, but we get it, we got it. Alright, make sure that's supposed to lock in there, but I mean, as long as everything is in place, then it's all good. And let me bring it over a little bit, got it on needle number 10, let me bring it to the center needle number 5. So I, I know the two metal parts are right here. This metal part right here of the frame, metal part right here of the frame, and I can feel it. So the objective is, when this is embroidering, not to make the needle in this hit the metal part. All right, that's the objective of tracing. So I hit that trace button on the screen, escape, and it goes fast. And while it's going down, I can hit it again and make sure while it's going down, I'm just feeling and making sure that it's not going to hit it. And then after I do the fast trace, I can hit the small trace so it takes a longer time to trace. And I'm just feeling, 
okay making sure it won't hit there and I got my finger right here I feel where the frame is and I know that it's not gonna embroider beyond that part all right all right guys the Rakoma oh I should have put some water sol soluble on it this side all right we're gonna see how this comes out all right guys the Rakoma EM1010 sorry the Rakoma EM1010 guys what is it good for? What is it not good for? Do I still love it? Would I still buy it again? What do I recommend? Yes, I still love it. Yes, I would buy it again. But I'm gonna tell you guys, this machine is not for every application. A lot of you guys are, this embroidery, is, embroidery comes in levels, right? I had to get, get you guys a better view and angle the mic another way to capture my, my voice. So embroidery comes in different levels and you need different equipment to accomplish different things or you just need the right equipment to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Like I said, I should have put some water sol soluble stabilizer on top of it, but I don't think it's necessary. It's going to be fine. So with that being said, I'm going to tell you what this machine is good for and why. You guys know I like to do small patches and stuff like that. Um, I like to do a lot of that stuff because, I mean, that's what you see when people were customizing their merch right and sometimes you see people with like the large the large chest logos and stuff like that and the machine is good for that oh my gosh it's a pain behind okay so the uh thread is out the bobbin thread is out so i got to change the bobbin thread and i don't want to cut because i, I want to show you guys this all in one take because some people like to think that like you know oh something happened or something like that so i'm just gonna do this on the fly so i got another bobbin right here but I'm not going to use the other bobbin, and the microphone is on the other side, so just watch me do it. Just watch me do it. I'm not going to cut at all. I'm going to reach in between underneath the pants right here and access the bobbin, take the bobbin out, put a new bobbin thread on it, and put it back in, all right? All right, so I'm not going to move the pants. I'm just going to reach in between the legs and access the bobbin case, grab the bobbin out, all right? Bobbin's empty. All right, that's the reason why the machine stopped. The bobbin thread is empty. No bobbin thread on there. You guys see that? Yeah, you guys see it. All right, so now, gonna get some bobbin thread right here. Got a whole nother bobbin, but I'm gonna use the same bobbin because that bobbin has the tension that I want. I'm gonna place it inside of here. And how did I know that? I know that from embroidery and I know, and I know my machine. All right, it's gonna take you guys a while to learn your machine. Put the new bobbin in there, boom, ready to go. With the tail, I'm gonna put it back inside just like, I'm gonna put it back inside just like this. Sorry, I was off camera, I did that off camera. All right, so I'm reaching in there, pop that back in there. I'm gonna close the bobbin case. And maybe I'll back up my design just a tad bit, just a tad bit. See, see what I'm talking about, watch this. Back it up just a little bit. Um, How do I do that again? Uh, da, 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 da. I hit the T bake. I'm gonna go backwards just a little bit. All right. Now put it back into stop mode, and now I hit the start button. And then when I hit the start button, it's gonna start again. All right. All right. All right. So all that happened was I was out of bobbin thread. All right. Where was I, guys? Had to cut to bring the camera close to get you guys a better view. All right, so, all right, so, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, this machine, what is it good for? What is it not good for? And you see, I should have backed up a little bit more because now we got a little gap right there, but it's okay, sorry. That's, that's what practicing is for, all right? So, um, and I can back up and I can go cover, cover that right now if I wanted to. We'll do that in a second after it gets across the whole thing. Anyway, um. This machine, what is it good for? Who is it good for? It's good for people that want to do simple embroidery stitches, right? Um, I just increased the ISO real fast on the camera so you guys can get a better view. So, what do I mean by that? What, what am I talking about? When you are embroidering thick items, this is not the machine for that. 
Now, when I say thick items, I mean like leather, shoes, and listen very carefully, designs that have a lot of thread piling up on top of each other. All right, designs that have a lot of thread that pile up on top of each other and get really, really thick. I don't think this is the machine for that. This is the machine for simple designs. By simple, I mean designs that don't have a lot of thread piled up on top of each other. Designs that are not going through super thick materials like leather or um, I don't consider denim a thick material. It's not because I've already showed you guys that this can embroider through denim fine with a simple design. Now when you get to designs that have a lot of thread, a lot of embroidery thread, like the one layer doing a back stitch right here like we're doing a back stitch, then you got another layer of text, then you're going over, over that other layer of text with a thick satin stitch, no. And then you're turning around and doing swirls and with the text and stuff, no, it's not good for that. You're going to get thread breaks. And it's not the machine's fault that you're getting thread breaks, it's because the design has too much too many thick layers on it. Does that make sense to you guys? It's, it's common sense, but you gotta break it down. I gotta break it down so that everybody watching can understand. I know a lot of people get it, but a lot of people won't. You guys see the machine going and going and going and going, and a lot of people, some people are gonna say, well, how come he can get his to work, but I can't get mine to work? I'm telling you right now. It's because of the design, or it's because of what you're trying to embroider on, right? This machine is good for light, let, let, let's just call it light duty embroidering. Light duty embroidering. They have a machine for heavy duty embroidering. That's the MT-1501. You guys have saw me embroider on belts and you guys saw me embroider on shoes. It does not get any heavier dutier than that. I mean, nobody's embroidering on wood, you know what I'm saying? So, so heavy duty machine, you want the MT-1501. Light duty machine, when you're starting off your business and you just want to put your logo across the chest, and the design is not super, super thick, right? You didn't, you didn't digitize it all thick and crazy. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can make a thick design. When I, when I say thick, I don't mean like, oh, it's gonna be thin and you can see through it. No. When I say thick, I mean like, one full layer of thread tightly packed close together, followed by another full layer of thick, thick, just as tightly packed text and then you want to make a line going through the text real thick or something like that. That's three thick layers of thread. You're going to get thread breaks because this machine is a light duty type of multi-needle embroidery machine, right? It can do great designs. But I'm going to, and I, I, I want to tell you guys this so that you guys aren't surprised and so you guys know exactly, exactly what you're getting, right? And you guys know what it's good for. And you guys know what to expect. You get the real deal over here. I'm going to tell you guys the real deal. This is a good machine. It works, but it's light duty. And I'm going to tell you guys, any machine that you get in this class, any machine that you get in this class with the plastic body frame, light work, you already know what I'm about to say. They're, 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 they're good for light duty embroidery. All right? All right, so... Light duty embroidery, can you start your business with it? Yes. No, you're not going to be embroidering on belts. No, you're not going to be embroidering on shoes. Yes, you can embroider on your sweatshirt. Yes, you can embroider on your denim jacket. Yes, your design will look great. No, your design won't have gaps in it. But just know, and I, 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 um, I blame that on digitizers, guys, because a lot of digitizers, they just digitize their stuff and they just trace over one layer, trace over another layer, trace over another layer, and you know, and, and, and put the design on top of all of that. And that's not proper digitizing. Proper digitizing to me, and I'm new to the game, but proper digitizing in a way that's gonna work across all machines is you do one layer, which is your background, right? And then if you have another, say for example, if I had another circle layer going on top of this. I would make a hole right here and then put that circle over top of that, all right? That's proper digitizing in my book. But you're going to get people that just put another circle right on top of that layer of circle and then want to put font right on top of that. Like, that's not proper digitizing if you ask me. In my book, that's not proper digitizing. That's not how I would do it. All right, I'm going to stop it real fast because see what happened right there. I accidentally stopped the, I stopped the uh, 
camera instead of stopping the um, embroidery machine. But so what happened right there is I had a yellow thread and it embroidered into the design. So I'm just going to pull that out. I'm going to pull that out real fast. That's what happened when you got like loose threads just hanging. That's my fault. So, you not have loose thread hanging. So let me loop that over top of here. Pull it a little bit more. Loop that on top of here. And pull it in a way so it doesn't come down. It came down again. Look at that. That's the one thing I don't like about this machine. Is the fact that when you go like this, you got to lightly pull it so it doesn't. So, and it came down again. That's the one thing, my one gripe so far that I have with this. <sighs> Look at that. Pain in the behind. It just won't stay. Alright, so just tuck it away. Whatever. And keep it going. Alright. Actually, let me trim this part right here still. Boom. I want to come back and do it. Yeah, I'm see if I can do that. That'll test my skills right there. But yeah, guys. Um, light duty embroidery. And this is light duty embroidery right here. Let me, let me fix that. Give me a second. All right, I got that thread out of my way. Guys, the way to get around that is after you run your machine, the thread is gonna get tucked underneath this part right here, but if you have to change threads for whatever reason, you're gonna have threads hanging like that, and it's a pain in the behind. Let me lower the camera a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna go forward in this design a little bit. I'm gonna let a little bit of this stitch out. And then uh, I'll be right back to show you guys the end results. But as you guys see, I didn't go over and trace that. That's okay. It's not that not that serious. I'm just going to um, trim it at the end. If you guys see what I'm talking about. Let me zoom in right here. You know. Like I said, that's a practice for. And that's why you want to kind of like make sure. Make sure that you have the right uh, brand new bobbin when you're starting a new design and stuff like that. So that you don't run into... The thing that just happened to me. And you also want to use some water soluble, stable, sol soluble, I always have a problem saying that word, water solvy stabilizer so that it doesn't sink into the garment. All right, so, you know, it stays on, the design stays on top of the garment. But it looks good, so far so good. All right, I encourage you guys to read the comment section. You guys probably can't hear me, let me stand behind the mic. I encourage you guys to read the comment section because you're still going to have people in the comments saying, Oh, I like this machine or I like that machine. That's okay. It's okay to like the machine that you like, but, <laughs> but don't, you can't deny what you, what you, what you, what you, what you just watched. You know what I mean? And that's what kind of gets under my skin a little bit. You know what I mean? When, um, n well, not so much get, gets under my skin, but like, it, it's kind of, it's kind of weird to me. It's like you just watch the video and you're still going to come in a comment saying that the, the 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 thing doesn't work or something like that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. That's why I like to show show you guys all the way from start to finish. Got a little tail thread right there. No big deal. Going to trim that at the end, right? Sometimes you might have some clean up to do. But for the most part, everything is embroidering out good. I'm going to save that to the end, clean that up at the end. And we'll have a closer look at the design at the end guys, all right? One thing I want to tell you guys, when you when you get tails, when you get tails, the solution to that is to tighten up the top tension just a little tiny bit, but I'm not getting tails on every single one. I'm just getting tails on some of them. So I'm just going to reach up here and I'm going to tighten up my white bobbin tension just a little bit. Just a little bit, all right? And that's supposed to get rid of the tails, all right? So um, our design is done. Let's take it out and take a look at it and we'll talk about it. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. All righty. All right, so you just loosen that up right there. All right, take that off right there. Put that bracket to the side somewhere. Then you take your thing. Let me get my snips to get ready. Get my little snips to get ready to trim all the little jump stitch right there, a little, all right, a little one right here, a little tail right there, trim that, you know, nothing major, nothing major, all right, right there, boom, 
Good to go. All right. All right, so let me just take this out. And this is attached to that. And I believe this is tear away. Yeah, so that tears away from the pocket. Uh-oh. I forgot that. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> I used the 8 and one wrong. And, uh... These pants are toast because... <laughs> I was supposed to put this in the pocket. I put it over top of the, oh my gosh. I did exactly what I said I wasn't supposed to do. Look at this, look at this. See what I did? See what I did guys? So now I have to cut the pocket to get this eight and one out because it's embroidered shut. <laughs> Got it in right, and this time I even used some clips to help stabilize it even more. Um, that's what I. This is the way I actually recommend that you guys do it. But like I said, that this is my first time using the eight in one, so you know I like to do stuff on a fly, real case scenario, so you guys can see um, exactly what you have in store. So uh, let me put this on the machine the right way. All right, I'm gonna show you guys. This is how you place it into the machine the right way. You have to make sure this right here goes inside of the pocket. All right. So, the pocket goes inside of there. That's where I messed up at. The moment you realize you messed up, you can make a bunch of memes for my videos. Alright, so this little arm is inside of the pocket now. Alright. Oh boy, Jesus, fix it. Alright, let me trace again. <laughs> So we got it right. We we got it right this time, guys. And look, I even got some water soluble, some aqua soft topping for you guys. All right, I'm gonna lay that on top of here. I'm gonna do it right this time. All right, and this is the way you're supposed to do it. I know I cut corners a lot, but I'm just trying to show you guys how to do this stuff and like tell you guys how to do it, but show you guys how not to do it. I guess. I didn't do that on purpose, by the way. I just screwed that up. Alright, so it is what it is. Alright, there we go. Alright. This is what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. Use the soft topping. So this is actually the real video that you guys want to see. Doing it the correct way. Right? With no thread breaks and all that other stuff. Because I got, you know, new thread in and all that stuff. But... I mean, it is what it is. Um, I guess I could do a time lapse, you know, of this real fast. So let me put my, let me see if I can, hold on a second. You are now tuned into ADAP TV. Like, comment, subscribe. ADAP production. I do what I do for me. Lucky you. You are now tuned into ADAP TV on YouTube. All right, guys, we got it right this time, I promise. Guys, um, I'm going to run a survey for you guys. Is it better when I keep the mistakes in the videos or do you want me to start all over again and have the perfect video for you guys? What do you guys think is better? All right. See the pocket is is not sewn shut this time. We're good to go. We're good to go, guys. What do you guys think is better? Is it better that I not show the mistakes or do you guys want me to keep the mistakes in there? Personally, as somebody who started off... I gotta turn my mic around, sorry. Just a second. Keep that in there too. Have my mic turned around so I can. <laughs> Alright. Personally, as somebody who started off doing this, um, I think that it's very, very valuable to have the mistakes in the videos. It's something that I would have liked to see. It's something that I think would have been a little comical, right? Not everybody likes that. Some people get upset because they come here to, to, to oh I should have did that on camera right it's alright uh, all I did was rip off the background and take this off my thing it's, it's okay so yeah um here's our design I got some more funny stuff that happened but um yeah I'll, I'll show you guys that in a second but yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments down below is it better to keep the mistakes in the video or do you want me to take the mistakes out and just make perfect videos because I could do that you know I can make perfect, I could be like every other YouTuber and act like everything goes perfect all the time, but that's not my channel, that's not my style, that's not what I do. I like to come up with an idea and not even try the idea. 
I just sh show you guys the idea while I'm working it out and so you guys can see all the fumbles and stuff and it's fun to me it's fun to me and I think it shows you guys teach we learn together right and you know like we just learned something right now um cut a bigger piece of aquasoft topping so that it doesn't fold back onto itself cut a bigger piece right because this right here is a mess but it's all good because it's going to wash away and stuff like that but the design looks really good it's really clean right it's really clean um and like i said all this stuff is just going to wash away you can peel it off around the edges right here and the rest of it it's water soluble so it just washes away so it's all good it's not that serious you know it's really important though that what i learned is not to pull on this too much the parts that are like really close together and stuff like that just leave them alone and just let it wash away and and, and like some soap uh, i mean some water i said some soap just put some water on there dab it and let it dissolve on its own but um the design looks really really good really really clean way better than the first time because the first time i just put it on there and I didn't use any clips on the side or I, I you know, I just, it's my first time doing it, right? Second time, magnifique, right? Min minus the stabilizer all over the place. <laughs> but, let me know what you guys think, man. So what do you guys think? Should I at least test out these theories that I have and these things that I'm trying to do before I make the videos? Or should I just continue to make the videos as they are? Um, for the most part, the projects are kind of always successful, kind of. But something always goes wrong, so I I think it's, I think that's exciting. I don't know. I get, I you know I think it's funny. I think it's exciting. I think it's um pretty cool to for you guys to watch. I don't know. I might be wrong. I'm sorry if you're one of the people to get uh, upset when things go wrong because you're watching it for a perfect tutorial. But these aren't really tutorials. These are more like trial and errors. But the goal of this video though was to show you how to use the eight and one. And on the Rakoma EM1010 and show you that the Rakoma EM1010 is in fact um, a machine. And to tell you guys what it's good for, and I hope I explain that to you, it's good for thin, um, not thin, but like it's good for not thick embroidery. All right, you don't want layers that pile on top of each other. No leather, no shoes, just basic denim, denim jeans, denim jacket. Um, I don't even think, and I haven't tried it, going over the seams of denim, I would say no. I think it can do it, but I would say try to st stay away from that, stick to flat surfaces, alright? And, um, if you're going to layer three layers of different colored threads on top of a design, I would say you need the MC-1501 to do that, and not the EM-1010, alright? Even though it probably can do it as long as the layers are flat, right? It's some, some Tommy stitches. But when you start swerving satin, thick satin stitches, this is exactly. When you swerve a thick satin stitch on top of another thick satin stitch and go across it and then put it, it's not good for that. Tatami stitch with a satin stitch and another satin stitch over top of that satin stitch, you're going to start having thread breaks. All right. But the machine embroider is fine. It's great. Um, it can get your brand out there if you just got... Boom, you want to put your uh, on a sweatshirt, your logo across a sweatshirt or a design on a sweatshirt. It's good for that as long as the design, like I said, doesn't have too many zigzags. And... Let's say that's good. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I love making these videos for you guys. I hope it was entertaining. Give this video a thumbs up if you like. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your thoughts and your comments down below um, of which, what you guys think I should make next. And I'm really, really excited to make it. I'm going to be interviewing the guys from Vexels. The guys from Vexel. I'm going to be interviewing him. The CEO is coming up soon. I got an email from him. And he um, would like to come on the channel. So I'm going to do that and make that happen for you guys. Let me know some questions that you guys want me to ask him um, down below in the comments. Don't forget to use my... Go to allenaway.com and purchase your dedication shirt. Right? Available on the website right 
now. Follow me on Instagram, ADUP Productions, Facebook, ADUP Productions, and I'll talk to you guys on the next video. I have fun making this video today, guys. Talk to you guys on the next video. It's your boy. Peace. Now back to the business, y'all. Like who is that comes back again? So off y'all to witness history, mentally legacy. Yeah, that's me. Look at you, tragedy. Should've stayed loyalty. Can't even rap on a beat. Listen to my melody. Kill him like my name Ali. Bring him back and murder beat. Ain't the productions rhyme like it's nothing. Spit sight. I'm bluffing.